Hi, my name is Erin Snett. I'm 5'9". I'm based in Los Angeles. It was odd. We felt, Mark and I think, slightly isolated in our world that was seeing it as a riot and an uprising. There is both horror and rage and a sense of extreme impotence and saying, what are we gonna do? So I got together with a group of people and we organized a press conference on the Warner Brothers lot on Wednesday with entertainment industry people. And it was really quite an extraordinary event. And some people in Hollywood called up, powerful people. Having looked at the press release and saying, well, we agree with everything, but how can you decry the verdict? And we said, you can't, you know, the truth's got to be told. And we're not going to like pretend to be parents here. And it was such an obvious paternalistic response. And there was a lot of discomfort I felt, not in the young actors, not in some of the young directors, but in the older, more established group that there could be a response saying, stop the violence. And no one was prepared to say this verdict is out of the question and we don't blame you. And it was a funny thing because we did this press conference on 24 hour notice, again, because Hollywood is a little bit about putting on a show. People were worried and saying, gee, what happens if the news media don't show up or if the wrong people show up and you fail? And there is a sense of if you go out, you have to make sure you don't fail, which has come from 20 years of Republican and Democratic Party politics as opposed to street party politics, where it isn't about failing. It is about struggle and telling the truth and being angry. And so what if only three people show up? You've done something. And there it was. Our house became, it was, oh. there were about 14 kids who live in West Hollywood and who work at Warner Brothers or at our company who came to stay with us. I call them kids early to mid twenties. <laughs> and they came to stay with us because they felt like their houses weren't safe. Yeah, their houses weren't safe and they had come to our company because of our politics and known it was a place to talk. And so we said, come back and stay with us. God, it became Camp Rosenberg for the next five days <laughs> in Brentwood. I think it was the most interesting thing for me which was taking all of these kids who had grown up hearing about the 60s political kids who had no place to put it. White kids, black middle-class kids. And for them being glued to our TV, they had a kind of Jungian unconsciousness, collective connection now with what happened before. but no place to put it. So, we went throughout Beverly Hills and West LA and made everybody give us money and stopping everybody on the line out for money and everybody on every aisle. Give me a buck. Give me this. Watching their reactions to it was also fabulous for these kids. It was like street theater.
people who have lived in Los Angeles all their lives have never been to South Central. I mean, went in caravans with me. I mean, that's pretty scary. I don't know any other city that would happen. I'm in Chicago now. People are in the South Side all the time. You can't avoid it. And everyone knows Harlem and it isn't true in Los Angeles. A lot of people have lived there 25 years and have never been. These kids have never been. It's as if it were a different country. That's the view. That is the horror of Los Angeles. So, yeah, it was an incredible time. You got there and there was a line of people distributing food into Diane Watson's headquarters, into the warehouse there. It was now completely multicultural and multiracial line of people, young people in their 20s, passing out food. And everybody, every time someone came up in a Mercedes or a station wagon or whatever, who had never been there before with food, everyone was applauding. There was a sense of community. You felt the possibility. Hell, you believed it could change. Here we are. A year later. Didn't change. All of the language was there. All of the big gestures were there. And I guess what disturbed me what I, which is what I would really want to talk about, about that week, was the way rich white people guarded their homes and sent their children out of Los Angeles as if the devil were coming after them. <laughs> and it wasn't realistic. It was, I think, a media fest of making the white community scared of the African-American community. It was as if nothing, nothing had changed. And everybody, people who were well-intentioned and understood that nothing had changed the degree to which the city, the white community, went into a sense of real terror and an inward-looking self-protectedness. As opposed to standing up and saying, we'll stand by whatever. If the verdict is this, and these people are not found guilty, it will be unjust and we'll stand together. It was as if nothing, no connection had been made because it can't be made in four days. It was a fake, it was a fake euphoria we all felt. It was the euphoria of, look, look what's possible. Not what's real. Boom. Everything retreated. Everybody's scared in LA. 